and um, I think the board has a responsibility to take a look into that, take a look into that, and take that in, into consideration. Six new homes, mine being one of them. Um, there's a, a farm over there, a, a working farm. I mean, it's not just the new homes that whose property value will be diminished by having this place there, but you know all the homes in the area. Um, additionally, after looking through the zoning ordinance for as long as I did, I'm not even sure that where this property is situated even conforms to the dimensional regulations for the industrial district. According to 9714, uh, the minimum road frontage for an industrial lot is 200 feet. I, I looked at the map. I'm not a, a map reader by trade, but uh, I did the best that I could. And I don't see where the frontage, if anything, is minimal. Um, it's certainly not 200 feet uh, frontage. The people that want to buy this property, if um, if it, it, I guess, providing it gets changed to uh, com uh, industrial, I'm sorry, um, they want to put a composting and wood chipping business there. Uh, under Section 97-58, solid waste management facilities and industrial uses, C states, amongst other things, that composting facilities shall be located at least a thousand feet from any residence, um, not owned or leased by the owner or operator of the composting facility. I would like to ask Mr. Dillon, is, I don't know if he's here tonight, but um, just how far, you know, where on that lot do they want to put this facility and how far is the nearest home? Um, I'm, I have a, a sneaking suspicion it is within 1,000 feet, which, uh, you know, like I said, not just the residences that are within, within the 1,000 feet, but all the residences, residences and the farm in the area will be affected. Um, Having mentioned the composting and wood chipping business, I'd also like to either remind the board or inform the board that in October of 2001, Mr. Dillon was here before the Town Goshen Zoning Board of Appeals. Then um, he was representing Mulchrite, who wanted to put a mulching operation in that very same site. Uh, the concerns of some of the citizens who were present at that meeting uh, were the smell and the noise of the traffic. Then during a Town of Goshen Planning Board meeting in 2005, Someone wanted to put a topsoil and mulch facility on Hartley Road, uh, just down the block uh, in lot number 18. And what one resident <coughs> had asked that a noise study be conducted to see if the noise from <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, the noise from the operation could have an effect on wildlife. Uh, I'm concerned about all all of those things, uh, as well as the r reality of odor and the risk of fire. Um, from Section 97-50 Environmental Performance Standards, F states no land shall no land use shall be permitted, which omits any discernible obnoxious odor outside the lot. Um, my third question uh, then would be, how is um, this mulching facility? I, I know I'm tr kind of getting ahead of myself. I realize that, um, but you know that odor is something that I don't think is going to be able to be contained unless this facility is an indoor facility, and I'm not quite sure. Um, what this, uh, what these folks plan on doing over there. Um, they, uh, in, regarding fires, a study was conducted in 2008 um, by two gentlemen. Uh, they, they did this study to try to find out, um, better explain the factors that lead to fires at mulch and compost production facility, facilities. Um, spontaneous combustion, which uh, I guess you all know what that is. Um, accounts for three quarters of the fires documented in that survey. Um, and it's also the most difficult type of fire to detect and fight. They received 42 responses um, when they sent out these surveys to uh, various companies throughout the United States and Canada. They got back 32 responses. Um, actually, they got back all 42 responses, but out of the 42, 10 of the facilities said that they never had a fire. The other 32 said, oh yeah, we had fires, and this is you know, how it happened, and this is why it happened, and this is how we fought it. So for me, um, the, the probability of them having a fire at some point, um, the, I think the odds are in, the fav in favor there. So uh, my fourth question would be, how is the town of Goshen prepared to deal with a fire at a mulch slash compost facility? Um, in my research and whatnot, I, I came upon a woman named Adrian Esposito from the Citizens Campaign for the Environment. Um, she uh, was just successful in, um, uh, she along with Brookhaven Community Coalition 
were success successful in having the New York State Department of Environmental Con Conservation order the enclosure of a troubled um, mulching facility out on Long Island. They just had another fire there in September of this year. I think that was like the third or fourth fire. Um, so this, this coalition was able to impress upon the DEC that you know these facilities really need to be enclosed. Like I said, I realize I know I'm getting ahead of myself because this is really just about the zoning at this point. All these other things will be addressed, I guess, if it goes further to the uh, planning board. But I think, you know, at this time, I, I realize you're merely considering changing the zoning on a parcel of land. But I, I don't think that this, the decision should be taken lightly because it's going to really affect the quality of life of the residents in that area. Uh, when I closed on my house in 2005, both this lot and the lot that Orange and Rockland Utilities bought in May of 2006, uh, over a year later, was owned uh, rural. I expected real neighbors, if anything, um, not a substation and a compost slash mulch facility. Uh, I just don't understand how this is fair. Uh, for the reasons listed above, I would have to disagree with anyone who believes that changing the zoning on this fossil to industrial would be good use of this property. And lastly, uh, in the local paper last Friday night, there's a uh, I happen to read the legal notices, which I never do, but there is a, a notice of propensity, uh, pendency against the subject fossil. So I'm just wondering if maybe the, the uh, town attorney could uh, tell me how um, that notice of pendency will affect the request for zoning and or the sale of the property. So that's my fifth question. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and as you want to answer yeah. Yeah, in regards to the notice of pendency, uh, I assume that was the county tax publication. And what that would indicate is that there was a non-payment of taxes, and the counties commenced what they call an in-rem tax proceeding to take title to the property. Uh, it would have no effect, per se, on the application presently for a zone change until if and when title would actually change hands, and then the new owner, should it change hands for non-payment of taxes, would, could either pursue or withdraw the application. There's nothing automatic, uh, but that's, uh, and I'm guessing, or I'm assuming that's the proper publication that you were talking about, the, the interim yeah. county. Okay. I, I hadn't seen it myself. Yeah. In regard to all your questions you have, they would certainly be answered when this, this in the, in the uh, environmental review process on this particular property, if the zoning changes. Are there anyone else have any comments on this uh, public hearing? Just to clarify, for the public and the board's uh, purposes, as you know, but well, it's a zoning change before us. But because the applicant did indicate that uh, the projected use of the property was a compost business, if you will, that just procedurally, as the board knows, and, uh, the public should be aware, uh, that's going to require not only a zone change, a special use permit at this board level, a site plan at the planning board level, and possibly uh, environmental studies between the two boards. So right. I guys want to make, just clarify which are all the same way. Right. Uh, my name is Bruce Wiggins. I live at 32 Owens Road, which is right at the corner near the Orange and Rockland property, which is, this is behind. And I have concern with them changing the zoning because when we purchased the property, we did check the zoning and the uses of this property in the area. And right now, substations are not a permitted use they're supposed to be a special that need a special uh, dispensation from the boards to do a zoning board and also if we start changing the zoning in properties when people have bought property around it it greatly affects us we looked at the property we looked at the area around it we saw what it was and we had an expectation of what type of businesses would be allowed in the area we did not expect to have property being changed back to industrial which would allow just about anything to come in. It's not that big a lot. It's adjacent to the county park. It's adjacent to housing, farmlands, and things like that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Anyone else? Ma'am? Hi, I'm Kathy Strong. I'm the daughter of William and Jean Strong uh, at 212 Cheechunk Road. We, uh, my parents are the owners of the farm that the previous uh, uh, speakers spoke of and it's been in our family since 1812. So we've seen a lot of changes, and we're most concerned about changing the zoning again. I don't want to um, have to reiterate what uh, my neighbors have said, 
just wanted to enforce that we have the same concerns. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, board members, do you have any comments? All right. My, my first concern, I guess, is what Ms. Allen pointed out. If, if, it's, if there is a zoning law out there that says they, need, they don't have enough road frontage, I wouldn't want to act on this like, I'm not, I'm not going to hold on to something that's a violation of our existing code. I don't know if that's true or not, but myself personally, I'm not going to vote on it one way or the other tonight because I want to look right. into that. Okay. If that's the case, that's the case. <clears throat> and um, a lot of the question, I, I appreciate this because many years ago, Mr. Savro on 17M proposed a site, just so this board knows, and it was closed or not approved, basically what the concerns Mr. Allen had, fire prevention, et cetera. So I don't know if those, Dennis, that, would those questions be answered at the planning board? <coughs> uh, they should be answered at this board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was concerned concern fire control. But they would come up again, board. yes. Okay. But this is a public hearing. We're supposed to answer all the questions. Yes. Uh, or you just take input. No. And, no, you uh, take uh, input. input. Right. You take input, actually. Right. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily require an exchange or right. comment. Right. 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 But, but it is important that you look at that type of issue. In sure. fact, that's the type of thing that you may want to look at in what they call an environmental assessment form. One more point. I'll be very brief. We all received a letter from Holly O'Han Spruce Health. She brought up a very interesting point. I don't know what the answer is, but I want to put on the table was not only what may be le leaching into the ground with the mulch piles there, what is the quality of the water that's already in the ground since it is in such close proximity to the outdoor landfill? So there might be pollutants in, you got to take the water out to keep the mulch wet, or you're going to have fires all over the place, which Ms. Allen brought out. But I think we should look into that too. The quality of the water or the outdoor can someone. What's the quality of the water in the ground? They they make they have to pull out to keep their mulch uh, fire resistant. That's all. Okay, Dennis, could you lead us through this process where we do have questions? It appears. Do we uh, keep the public hearing open or do we close it? You can. Uh, it's your prerogative. You can either close <coughs> it or if you feel there's a need for uh, more time, be it for issue examination or well, I think, we're, I think we're going to need some time for issue examination. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, and procedurally, what you need to do in that connection, right. uh, whether you close or continue the public hearing, what you need to do is, as you know, under secret state quality uh, review yeah, act, uh, you have to or you should designate yourselves as lead agency. Okay. Okay. And because this is what they call a type one action under the secret state regulations, uh, it's going to require what they call a full environmental assessment. What's been submitted so far by the applicant is a short form. Now, the full environment assessment form is only maybe three or four more pages, but it gives you a little bit more data so that you can, what they do, is call establish a scoping session in the event you want to examine some of the issues that you may be concerned about or may have come up. Uh, and as I was alluding to before, uh, this will, these will be revisited again by this board in connection with a special use permit for the particular use should you change the zoning and also at the planning board level should they uh, have to entertain a site plan application. Right. Uh, the issue becomes though at the timing or the timeline when you want to do these things, whether you want to again do a joint uh, analysis of the application with your planning board and require some of these studies at this time which can be used at, at every level of those applications. Why don't we do this? Why don't we close the public hearing and then appoint ourselves lead agency for the seeker review? Right, there's a, there's a resolution in your oh, file okay. to that effect. Okay. Uh, and, you, and, you wish to want to close the right. uh, hearing. Uh, well, would someone like to make a motion we uh, close the public hearing? I, I, quite frankly, I was thinking along the lines of keeping the public hearing right. open. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's due to the fact sure. a lot of other things that happened uh, yeah. here tonight. And then, then I had one other question, from, and that was uh, the October 24th letter that we received from David Church, uh, referring this to the, referring these types of things to the county. county. Mm -hmm. Has this gone to the county? Yes, it has. Oh, and and what was the response? Uh, I thought we had seen a response. Uh, uh, this I, the I didn't NU3. see anything in my, in my well, packet. Yeah. It it's no. either this one or the NU3, and they had no they had no problem with yeah, it. But I don't recall which which I don't want to. I, ask, I, read one of them, so I, I don't want to tell you more than no. But we'll need to get that answer. Yeah. I, would someone like to make a motion? Then we keep this public hearing open. Yeah. Okay. So moved. Is second. there a second? Any discussion? Is there any discussion? Uh, just uh, if we had closed it. Do we still take written comment? Isn't there a period? You could. 
but while it's open, we should, uh, if there's any written comment, then we should take it. Almost out. You should So that we have time to review it and, and understand it. <coughs> so. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Just clarify. Oh, yes. Could you tell me when my questions? Well, that's we're going to come to this. That's why okay. I keep it open. Yeah. That's okay. why we're going to keep it open. Okay. Yeah. We have now, regards, let, let me just make a few comments. One, it has been referred to the county under 239, the mandatory referral to the county planning department. We do not have a response yet. Okay. 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 Secondly, uh, you, I realize you voted to keep the uh, public hearing open. Uh, as you know, that would continue to remain open until such time as you gave a definitive date for closing, right. whether it be next meeting or sometime yeah. in the future. Right. Uh, and in fairness to the public, we should, should we decide to take any action, meaning to close it, it should be so noted perhaps in the newspaper article or not, not necessarily a legal advertisement, but just so okay. the public can be kept abreast. Sure, so they can be here to hear yeah, what we say. Oh, your comment, Doug, yes. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Allen's, I apologize, I think that's the young yeah. lady's yeah. name. Uh, her comments or her questions would be answered now as you continue to compile information through the public right. hearing. And, whether you well, want some of these we have to research. I mean, well, yes, I some of them might be readily known, but other ones we have to look at. Can you yeah. brought up, obviously. I thought the same thing. I want to make sure that's researched. Yeah. All right. Would, would someone like to make a motion then that we appoint ourselves a lead agency in regard to the secret review? Uh, before you do, before you do, there's a, you have a copy of a text of a uh, actual resolution. It should be in your folder. The secret determination? Yes. There should be, there's a resolution there. Right. Uh, wherein it's indicated, you know, lead agency status and uh, typing it as a type one. Okay. Uh, again, it well, why don't you go through folders. that then as, yeah. as this is a resolution? Not a problem. Okay. The, the resolution is proposed is under the secret regulations of the state of New York. Uh, Mrs. Kerr having submitted an application for a change in zoning of that particular parcel from uh, RUCO, a hybrid district, to industrial. Uh, where you held a public hearing, and if you notice in that second whereas paragraph, uh, instead of which was closed, it was which, con which was continued, would be the correction to the minutes, would be con was continued on November 10th, 2011. And then the state uh, seeker requires the lead agency to inspect the application be established, and it'll be typed. Uh, now, therefore, the town board of the town of Goshen is hereby designate itself as lead agency with respect to the current zoning uh, change application. Uh, type the action as a type one under seeker, and requires of the applicant a full environmental assessment form. And again, for clarification, both of the applicant, the public, and the board, the full environmental assessment form is, again, it's just a, a more lengthy document at this stage, which is maybe two or three pages longer than the uh, short form EAF, which was previously submitted. Would someone like to make a motion, then, that we, we appoint ourselves the uh, lead agency for this secret review per this resolution? So moved. Second. Any discussion? I do have a question. If I could, can I have an amendment to that motion? Because if you follow, the lead agency would also have to type it. It's type one. It's type one. No, well, I would just it's request, it's right, just request that someone move the, the resolution as before you, and okay. as I just summarized. It says type one earlier. It says type one earlier. Right, but the motion was not what the resolution recites. The motion, Doug, was to, to designate yourselves as lead agency. Okay. Per, you need a separate per, motion. No, 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 no. Per this resolution. It says in accordance with the resolution. In accordance with this resolution. Right, but again, I don't, I don't mean to be difficult. But no, you, you are. No, 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 no. Go ahead. See where I'm going? Yes, you're moving a resolution. Go ahead, guys. No, that's what I'm saying. You're moving a resolution yes. to designate yourselves as lead agency as per the resolution. You're basically ignoring the rest of Give us the motion. The motion, the motion would be to someone oh, move I'm the adoption of the resolution. On, I'll withdraw my second on okay. the original motion. Okay, give us the motion. Give us the motion. We'll go. I, uh, I need Matt, a get, get him under control, Matt, please. <laughs> One yeah, of the board members should move uh, the adoption of the Town Goshen Resolution entitled Secret Determination slash Kerr Zoning Change Application as presently before you, as contained in your uh, agenda folders, and as I just recently summarized. So I so moved. <laughs> and, and who was the second? I'll do the second. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion on this? Now, I do have a question, going back to Mrs. Allen's question. Now, what is the procedure to get all the answers to her question? Okay. The applicant does the answers all those um, through an application? I, I, if I was the applicant, yes, I would want to respond Great. to them. Okay. Uh, the board, as lead agency, yes. should this be adopted, the motion, you have a responsibility to respond to any comments made at the public hearing. Right. 
those comments have been made by Mrs. Allen. So yeah. although the applicant may compile them, if they do not choose to, the board should. Well, what I'm looking at is for the applicant to do this versus Understood. the board. They're it in the would, business. It would be in the applicant's yeah. best interest Fine. to do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm sharing. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm saying I can't force it. There's a motion on the floor, but, so we've got to have okay. um, All in favor, say, oh, we need a roll call vote, please. <laughs> okay. Madam Clerk. Now we got it. Councilman Cantorino. Aye. Councilman Lyons. Aye. Councilman Newbold. Aye. Councilman Capella. Aye. Supervisor Bloomfield. Aye. There you go. That was easy. Now, sir, your question. Now. Um, Jim Dillon, Jr. Yes. Um, on a full uh, environmental assessment form. Uh, uh, listen, the mic. Well, or I think it's a legal question for an attorney. Okay. Yeah. On a full environmental assess assessment form, mm -hmm. is it based on the zone change or the mulching operation? Uh, 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 again, uh, a number of uh, a number of items. Uh, the analysis of the board, as is, as disclosed to the board, that would be a mulching operation. Right, and that's one of the aspects of the Type One, uh, and because of the uh, the fact that it involved more than 2.5 acres in an agricultural district, there's a number of reasons or rationale for each decision. Okay. But you understand our, our client, uh, Mr. Card, right? They want to change the zone, whether um, there's a mulching operation or not, okay? Because of the hardship of she's surrounded by okay. the zone, zones okay. around her, so. That's why I asked the question. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly because of the proposed use. Uh, based on an analysis, though, the board, even if it was generic and no use was described, you could, in fact, type it as a type one action uh, and engage in some of the activities I was talking about. And, and again, I don't, just so that Mr. Dillon's aware, too, I'm sure you are, you're familiar with, with uh, full assessment forms. Yeah. They're not that detailed. It's not a, a, a tremendously burdensome uh, task on the part of an applicant, cost or otherwise. Now, what can become so if you develop it into an, an EIS, an environmental impact statement, and or right. studies are required. I mean, there is some questions about sound and all, Correct. you know, which, you know, we still would, you know, we're here for the zone change. Right, you still have to address. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it could be just a, a vague uh, answer. <laughs> yeah, so many so times it is, and then it's up to the board to determine whether that's what I would consider to be well, 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 satisfactory. We would, I can share with you right up front what we would like. We would like answers to those questions in such a fashion that it gives a, the person asking the question an answer that's complete right. you know, versus vague. Yeah. And related to the mulching facility? Well, you, you probably have to do it in two stages, right? Apples and oranges. Yeah, I think They're so. They're two separate issues. We understand yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. So the first issue you need to address is the zoning For change. The zone. And then if you want to continue with that, then you'll have to address the mulching operation. But I think they're separate, aren't they, Dennis? Uh, they, they are, and yet they're part of the record. Uh, I understand. Okay, and just to just follow up on that, uh, uh, the reason is by type one for Mr. Uh, Dillon's purposes also, and I quote from the regulations, that any unlisted action, which this would be in, in, right. in, the, in the first instance, the zone change, that includes a non-agricultural use occurring wholly or partially within an agricultural district yeah. that exceeds 25 percent or any threshold established in this section, et cetera, et cetera. There you go. So there, there's, there's different reasons why it has to go the route which I just described. Again, it's not onerous. Yeah. No, I, I, in all honesty, it, it can become onerous, both to the board and the applicant, depending upon what's required. But that's pretty much the procedure we're going to have to follow. We just want to do it right. That's all. Right. Yeah. Exactly. One other thing on this before we leave this subject, uh, we got a letter from Holly O'Hearn, Goshen, New York, uh, with her comments. Uh, they were received on November 4th. Uh, Madam Clerk, I'd like these as part of the record. Thank you very much. All right, uh, so I guess we got five. Oh, yes. I do have additional questions. Um, as far as the use goes, I don't know if now is the time for those. So the board wants to take yeah, input. Sure. Um, the facility, uh, would that be an enclosed facility if the mulching uh, composting uh, goes through? Uh, no. We, well, we have to go through planning board process, and we're not here for that. We're yeah. just here for the yeah. In fairness, just so that right. yeah. I apologize. Yeah. Ms. Allen? Yeah. yeah. Ms. Allen and the yeah. public, the board's work. Exactly. But what's before the board is a zone change. Right, right. So it's possible that this owner, this applicant, could change their mind, yep. and you may never hear of a, a compost op, uh, operation again. 
So in fairness, it's probably not completely fair even to the applicant to force them now to disclose or give t t t any detail on an application which they haven't prepared or submitted yet. That's why I said so, two and I, I, say, I know Mrs. Allen and everybody else might be interested. It's just it's difficult at this time to respond yeah. to well, it. Well, now when it goes, when the, into the, let's say we approve the zoning change good before the planning board and they go through all of this, all those questions will be answered by at that time, correct? Yes, and, and again, I've got to emphasize this to you again. Under your code, a compost business is a special, special use, use permit, permit which right. comes back to this board. Very good. Follow? So there would be a two, or be a three-time review, three. if you want to call it. That's what I was alluding to when we first yeah, started. I'm with you. Uh, okay. of, of seeker and right. examination. Okay. What you're doing is it's like going up a set of stairs. It doesn't mean you're going to climb all the way to the top, but each step you take, right. one less step you have to uh, complete again, and you've, you've made some direction, if you will, uh, in that particular path. You know what I would suggest? If you have some pertinent questions that are on your mind, just jot them down, send them to me, we will get them to the applicant. And at some point in the process, we will have those answered, depending on right. the zone change and what the ultimate use will be. Yeah, and in fairness, just like this question as to whether it be enclosed or not, that, that's premature because there is no application. Right. Yeah, we don't, I'm not trying to be right. again, no, difficult right. or technical, no, but I'm trying to explain. Okay. They might exactly. change Very possible. Yes. yes. Right. Then you wouldn't be confronted with that, that particular Hits issue. Good. The separate issues that have to be dealt Yeah, uh, exactly. And that's where I was, yeah. And that's what I was talking and alluding to before about yeah. what I call a coordinated review, where you might even get involved with your planning board examining this once extensively as opposed to do it in segmentation, which is illegal or improper. Okay. Uh, three different, you know, two different boards, three different sure. times. You know. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Dennis. Right. Okay. Okay. Are we ready for the second item now? Okay. The next item on the agenda is conduct a public hearing on Local Law 2-2011, Tax Levy Limits, giving authority to the Town of Ocean Board to override the New York State 2% Tax Levy Cap Law. Would someone like to make a motion we open the public hearing? So, second. Does anybody in the audience have any input they would like to share with the Board regarding their desires of overriding this, regarding this law? Would uh, someone like someone like to make a motion? Then we close the public hearing. So moved. Yeah, well, okay. That's all. I'm sorry. Okay. It doesn't matter. All, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I just thought they opened up and closed. No, I mean I just want to say that I'm not going to be in favor of it, and that's that's the end of it. We're going to stay with the two percent, and that's okay. where we're going. So I'll do it in a motion. I'll do it somewhere, but we're staying within the two percent. <coughs> We, we voted on no, 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 next. Okay, Dennis, you want to go through the resolution? Please? Yeah, now, again, the, what the board has before it is uh, in your uh, agenda package uh, a resolution we signed uh, t entitled Adoption of Local Law Number 2 of 2011, Override of Property Tax Cap, General Municipal Law Section 3 C. Is all resolutions. They're, it's framed in the affirmative. Follow? Meaning this resolution recites that you do, in fact, want to uh, violate the 2% tax levy cap. Uh, if you vote for the resolution, you are approving a violation of the 2% real property tax cap. Right. If your position is you want to be against that and you want the town to stay within the 2% increase on the real property tax levy <coughs> for the 2012 fiscal year, you vote against the resolution. Can't we make a different resolution? Can uh, we make the resolution well, then? Just, oh, yeah, okay. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, Whatever you, you, you want to do, but I, yeah, I would yeah. like... Hold on, guys. And, yeah, and the only reason if you do it that way is traditionally, and it's not a legal requirement, okay. but traditionally, resolutions are always framed in the affirmative. Okay. So that's why I took the time to explain to you again that, again, a okay. negative vote right. is an would, opposition would, to violating the cap. Would someone like to make a motion regarding this uh, resolution? Is there a second? Second. A a any discussion? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you can talk now. <laughs> no matter what, I think uh, I wasn't even for the public hearing or anything. Well, you were here at the time. I know that. That's why. I, that's why so I wanted to hear that. To say I was not this. here otherwise. otherwise I, I would have voiced that opinion. I have the floor. Thank you so much. <laughs> However. 
we should, uh, I mean, we, we're all trying to live within our means, and, and I think we should just stay within that 2% and just fight the bullet. Everybody's feeling the pain. And, uh, That's, I wasn't here last time, so I gave you my two cents. Okay. Any other comment? Yes. Go for it. <clears throat> the only reason we, we did this tonight was to protect us just in case of outrageous reasons that we couldn't come within the 2% or below. So we had an ace in the hole, which I would call, but uh, we don't need it. So uh, we did accomplish what we needed to accomplish, but it was something I think we had to do just in case. Because if you hear some of the percentages that Mr. Bloomfield will announce tonight on some of the ta uh, pensions that we have to make up and some of the things that the state is passing on, uh, uh, on us, you would know why we had to do this. So there was reasons to do this. Thank you. George? Well, I, I basically echo what uh, Lou was just saying, uh, except that um, from some of the state people that I have spoken to over this process. Um, there was supposed to be a 2% cap, which apparently the state um, passed, but um, there was also supposed to be mandate relief. And uh, from a number of different people, uh, we have been informed that there will be no mandate relief. So uh, we're kind of hanging out there. And uh, it was sort of a, a protection. I, I mean, before, Phil, before you even left, you made it perfectly clear that this was even something we were going to do. And certainly, uh, uh, to come full circle now with myself and the closes, um, that was my intent, too. Uh, you know, I'm a more abiding citizen, want to continue on, but I think the state really dropped the ball yeah. with not giving us some type of mandate relief along with this 2%, because it's impacting a, a lot of different types of things that we don't want to really impact, but unfortunately we have to. Thank you, George. Okay. Can you make comments? I think my comment is this. Uh, in all the uh, training and whatnot I've had on, on this budget this year, uh, I think it's important for the public to know, in the state of New York, we pay 78% above the national average for property tax in New York. Another way of saying that is we pay 178% above the average. Um, that is a significant problem for the state of New York being competitive. Earlier this year, this board tried uh, to work with a big company, Macy's, to come into the town of Goshen. And one, they were willing to go out and create 1,200 jobs. And they didn't come here. They went somewhere else because they got, it was, the cost of living was just so much lower. And uh, so that's, to me, is right in our face that we are not competitive as a state. And, uh, and we need to do something about it. The other thing that I would also like, I have to say, even though I'm not involved in the school board, the state of New York, pays more per child to educate them, we're tied with New Jersey, is my understanding, according to the comptroller. We pay more than any other state in the union. And yet we come out 37th in the quality of education when you look at all the facts and figures of how well our children do. So we have to fix this problem, and I have to echo what George said. Uh, no one told me we are going to have mandate relief, but we sure haven't got it. So, Madam Clerk, can we have a roll call vote, please? Councilman Cantorino? Nay. Councilman. Is that right, that is? That's correct. Nay. Yeah, if you right. want to vote against the local law, which means that you do not, in OT, right. wish to violate the cap of 2% of the real property tax levy right. from last year, 2012, the proper vote is a negative or nay. Right. Okay. Councilman Lyons? Nay. Councilman Newball? Nay. Councilman Capella? Nay. Supervisor Bloomfield? Nay. The adoption of this law fails. Did not pass. Now the next item, and I hope everybody's got a copy of this. Okay, this is the my analysis of the budget. Okay. The and, and there's some copies up here if you'd like a copy, because I think I'm, I'm going to go through it page by page, 
and it certainly makes more sense if you see what I'm talking about. Um, there you go. That's it. Does anybody else need a copy? Is it Alan? <coughs> Is it Ms. Allen or Mrs. Allen? Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever, Where? whatever you're feeling. Oh, well. Okay. So it would be, I, uh, I guess, Miss. Okay. Miss Allen. Okay. Uh, that, that's She's going to run for office next year. All right. You know. The, um, I'll rule it out. <laughs> First of all, I'd, I'd like to thank the board. And I'm going to start down with Mr. Cantorino. Mr. Cantorino is, is Commissioner of Finance. Uh, he's helped me every step of the way with this process. Mr. Lyons is Commissioner of Insurance. He has helped us out immeasurably in, in reducing our insurance costs. Ken and Lou, I've used them as sounding boards for what do you think, how should we proceed, et cetera, et cetera. I would also like to thank all the department heads and I would like to uh, thank Officer Edwards of the PBA Union and uh, John Pawalczyk, is that how you pronounce it? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Jeff Dobbins of the CSEA. It appears that everybody's trying to pull to make this thing work. So, with that, the way it works is, by New York law, is we have a tentative budget that has to be completed September 30th, is it, Bill? September 30th. That's normally a blue sky thing. Uh, then the preliminary budget had to be finished this week, okay, and that's what I'm presenting to the board tonight, is the preliminary budget. Once I finish this, reviewing this budget with the board, it's no longer the supervisor's budget, it is the board's budget. And then they can amend it, approve it, do where reject it, whatever they would see fit with this budget. So with that then, I would like to go through some of the goals that, uh, the financial planning goals that I used when I put this together. The first one was financial stability and weather the economic storm. We are, comp we are just now completing the third year of the most difficult recession since the Great Depression. It's certainly the most difficult recession in any of our lifetimes. Okay. Except maybe Dennis Plick. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to get you guys. Okay. The, um, the next thing we tried to do, I tried to do is protect jobs, particularly full-time jobs. Okay. And I've done okay, but not perfect. Protect services. And here too, I've done okay, but not perfect. And above all, I would like to achieve the New York, percent, New York State 2% tax levy cap because I think we need to do that to become competitive as a state. Now, some of the budget planning strategies that we use, this board has a five-year strategic plan, which I'll go through in a moment. We've been using this since 2006. As I mentioned, the second thing is to involve all department heads and union leaders early in the process. Solicit and share ideas with other municipalities. I've talked to a great number of people in other municipalities. What are you doing? What can I learn from you? What can you learn from me? Seek New York State expertise and assistance. Mr. Cantorino and I went to Albany. We talked to the Department of State. We've gone to, uh, to uh, uh, Representative Annie Rabbit. We've been to uh, Senator Larkin. We've talked to a great deal of people within the state government. What is it that's required of us, and how can we best do this? Okay. And then lastly, we participated. The budget officer, Mr. Standish. Oh, by the way, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. I missed him as being one of the thank you. I know. But Mr. Standish and Mr. Cantorino and myself spent it all day in a training session. Thank you, Ken. Just in case. Okay. Uh, regarding the, the training on this, what this... 2% tax levy law really would mean. Just a review currently of this five-year strategic plan. This goes back to 2006. This plan is 
it has been in place. We supplement it constantly. If we do something, we, we take it off, and then our new items put back on. But by, we buy used equipment. We buy used equipment. We refurbish the used equipment. In the last three years, for example, on trucks, we bought a 1994 International Harvester dump truck, a 1995 International Harvester dump truck, and refurbished them and are putting them in the fleet. That's about $30,000 a piece versus $185,000 for a new one before interest if you finance it. We bought a new chassis. We bought a new chassis for $105,000. and took the old bed and the old salter and the old plow off the old machine and put it on the new chassis. We've saved a great deal of money and you'll see we had to do this. We didn't want to do this. But our revenues have fallen off so sharply there's no other way to do what we had to do. We need to develop and improve the functioning capability of the organization. For example, we pay our own payroll now. We used to, we used to use automatic data processing. A company, we would give them money to run our payroll. We don't do that any longer. We have that, that ability now in-house. Um, those kinds of things. We're focusing on continuous cost reduction. Today, I, I talked to two different groups about, I talked to all our professionals, our engineers, our lawyers, our planners, and said, guys, gals, you're going to have to sharpen your pencil. We can't continue to pay you what you've been charging. Also, uh, we'll find another uh, uh, resolution later in the evening. I called the man who was the salesperson and said, listen, yeah. Did you okay. say Bucko? Bucko. Okay. Listen, Bucko, we can't pay you what you have in that resolution. I want a 5% reduction in, in your charges. The guy said, well, i got to talk to my boss. I don't care who you talk to. I was very polite to him. Yeah. He came back at 5 and said, yeah, you got the 5%. Sure so, I know. <laughs> the next thing is to settle tax or sharies. Certiaries are when a business challenges their tax assessment. And these have been building up and building up. And we set this year to resolve them. And by the end of this year, we will have resolved about 90% of them. And these are financial liabilities when they're out there and you don't know what's going to happen. And we've, we've done a good job on that one. The property revaluation. Uh, it should be valuation versus evaluation. That's where we're in-house using our own people and a couple of consultants being sponsored by the state of New York and they're paying for part of it and the county of Orange, they're paying for part of it. We're trying to use a computer system to evaluate all the property values, assessing the properties. And uh, what this will allow us to do is be current. Now we do it every 10 or 12 or 15 years. When we finish this, the input will be put in by computer, and it will basically always be current. And then the last item is a joint ec uh, economic development setup we've got with the village uh, for the development of some commercial properties. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the budget process as it pertains to this law. Uh, above that dark line, you'll see the budget process for 2011 and before. And basically, on the left-hand side, you see the standard sources of revenue, tax revenue, sales tax, mortgage tax, fines, uh, franchise fees, grants, etc. That's a fixed number. We say, well, here's how we think we're going to get. Okay. Then, that revenue plus the property tax revenue, okay, those two together have to equal the expenses. Now, in the past, the, the expenses and the property tax revenue needed to, we had, we had knobs to turn. If the expenses went up, the taxes went up. If we wanted to bring the taxes down, we brought the expenses down. That's how it's been. Now, for 2000, with this law, 2012 is the first year of the law. We have to comply with it. It's 2012, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Five years. 
And what it does, the standard sources of revenue remain the same, they're fixed. But now the property tax revenue is fixed. It is the last year's revenue times 2% to increase the levy. So it's fixed. And so the only thing we can do to control, that this board has to control, is the expenses. And so that's what we're all about. The next chart is what we call the assessable base. What is all the property valued in the town of Goshen? In 2011, it's 941 million. In 2012, it's 933 million. And the reason being is, is property values are going down. Home values are going down. And so we've lost uh, almost 1%, 0.0083%. Which says is if we do nothing else, we'd have to have a 0.0083% increase in taxes to break even with last year. Now let's talk a little bit about the revenues. Mortgage tax. Mortgage tax is down 65% from what it used to be. When I got here in January of 2007, I mean, I'm uh, Yeah, it was 2006, pardon me. Okay, 2006. We were collecting around $700,000 a year in mortgage tax. This year, we're, we're going to, for 2012, we're going to be $450,000 less than that, or we're going to have $250,000. That mortgage tax supports this whole building, the highway department, lots of things. And when you take $450,000 away and you can't increase your taxes, it has to be managed. Sales tax, we're projecting next year a 10% reduction in sales tax. A lot of this is going on in the world economy. A lot of uncertainty. All you have to do is find out what's going on in Italy and Greece and this place and that place. And those are the people who come to Woodbury Common to shop, along with Americans. And how is this going to unfold in the next 12 months? And there's so much uncertainty that Mr. Cantorino and I we said, well, we're going to drop the sales tax by $100,000. <coughs> because if we don't, and it doesn't materialize, and you tax in January, you have no way of getting it back. Court fines are down. They're going to be 275000 next year. They're down 16%. We have fewer state policemen. Uh, we had projected this year 325000 It's going to come in at two seventy five. Franchise fees for cable vision will be fifty thousand. The tax levy is plus two percent. It's four million five hundred eighty-five thousand. So we have six million sixty thousand seven hundred two dollars to budget with. The next chart just shows the cumulative mortgage tax loss since January first of two thousand six. We have lost two million thirty-eight thousand dollars. 2038000 It's almost impossible to overcome that. If this continues with the housing market being like it is, we're going to have to just deep cut or deeper cuts going forward. Sales tax we talked about. Now, abnormal costs, and this kind of goes to the mandates we were talking about. Until Friday of this past week, we were led to believe that the police pension costs were going to go up 4.2%. And that the non-police uh, pension costs were going to go up 2.6%. The police pension costs, when we got the estimates and hard facts and did the, or the division, the police pension costs next year are going to go up 70% or $86,000. $86,000. And we have 10 full-time officers. Do the math. Okay. For the non-police, it's going up 45%, or $73,000. And I'd have to find out how many employees we have, but it's it's still a big number, <coughs> big number per employee. That is catastrophic. That is almost impossible to overcome. We've, we've overcome it. Okay. 
but not without some pain. If it does this again next year, I'm not quite sure what we'll do. But we're going to be pushing back in Albany for sure, because we were led to believe one thing, and it turned out to be something else. Now, I just read in, in the Chronicle that the uh, in Chester, we're up 31%. We talked in Monroe, it's going up 70%. So I don't know who to believe. But ours is based on numbers that we have in hand. This is your estimate cost for next year. And it's 70% and 45% respectively. Hospitalization and medical insurance, they first told us it was going to go up 14.3%. And we started beating on that when we finally got it down to 6.5. Go figure. Workman's compensation insurance. Now, this is where George came on the scene. They literally came in. It was going to go up 6.7%, even though we had improved performance. So we brought all the people in here, the underwriters, and we said, listen, you can't do that to us. And we had two or three meetings with them, and we beat them in the submission, and we're getting it for 3.5 versus 6.7. And the one agency is not getting any fee, agency fee. So... But they want our business, they're going to have to be reasonable. The existing police contract next year is in the last year of a contract, and we had agreed to pay them 3.5%. Certainly we'll do that. That's going to cost $25,000 more. Fuel and asphalt and stone, we're just estimating we'll go up 15%. And anybody's guesses on that. So those are big numbers. Big numbers. Cost reduction. Well, all employees, with the exception of police, who've got the contract, all employees, CSCA and non-union employees, we're going to get a 0% increase next year. Okay. Reduction in the workforce, we're going to lay off, well actually reduce, four part-time employees, three of them will be laid off in this building. Uh, one of them left earlier in the year and was not not too long ago, was not back though. Two full-time employees. Okay. Uh, one of them retired and will not be back filled. Okay. And the other one uh, went and found another employment upstairs in the building office and will not be back filled. So six fewer people. We're also going from full-time to part-time with our chief of police. And we're going from full-time to part-time with a clerical employee. Uh, our debt payments are going to be reduced by $353,000, and I'll show you a chart in a moment how we did that. And we've done that by following our strategic plan. We pay cash as we go. We don't borrow money. Haven't borrowed money for operations since 19, uh, 2005. And then a whole series of sundry uh, reductions. This is the budget... There are hundreds of line items. And going through each of those line items, clipping and snipping, uh, all together with all the layoffs or not backfilling people and all the zero increases and all the sundry reductions and the debt payment, we have made $682,714 of cost reductions. Now, if you look at the next chart, it shows, well, what does that really look like? Our budget next year is going to be $6,988,553. That's $406,000 less than this year, 2011. We're under $7 million. We have not been under $7 million since 2007. We've been 8, 9, 10, 11. We've been above the $7 million. So it makes a significant difference. The next chart shows the debt reduction that we talked about. And uh, this chart has been seen before, but the fact is, and back in 2006, we had to pay the bank $677,000 to pay off our debts for that year. And it's now down to $352,000, or a reduction of 48%. Okay. Bottom line, then, the last page is, remember, we're supposed to be under this 2% tax cap. 
We've come in at 1.988%. It's closest to two as you're going to find. The tax levy increase for a home of $300,000 fair market value, okay, uh, village only will be $51 a year or $4.25 uh, a month. For the town, it's going to be $19 or $1.58 a month. And the reason being is now with a town, is town-wide. That's just not the town, but it's town-wide. The village is village only. So we've done this. A couple of things that I would conclude is um, we're going to need mandate relief from Albany. It's not good enough for them to say, well, you towns and schools and fire departments and libraries, etc., villages and cities, be at 2% and then give you a 70% increase in just one line item. That's not fair. That's not reasonable. And it has to stop. And I think we've got people in Albany who can fix it. But it's got to be fixed. And fixed soon. Um, so, with that, uh, it's a public hearing. If someone would like to talk about it, ask questions about it, uh, we'll certainly listen to what you have to say, and then questions from the board as well. Did we open the public hearing? I'll take it back. Well, we did when we reviewed this. Yes, we yes. did. So now we want public motion. Public comment. Yeah, Anybody's got We have the motion. We don't have a motion. We don't have a motion. Yeah, to my knowledge. Okay. Then, would someone like to make a motion? We open the public hearing regarding the 2012 budget review. So moved. <laughs> so, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, Doug, if I yeah. read this correctly and I heard correctly, we're now going from a full-time chief to a part-time chief? Yes. Now, does that take us out, out of the realm of civil service? Our attorney told us we could do this. We have now got to proceed on and figure, out. figure it out. Yeah. We were just worried about the budget, but now we've got to figure out the task. And is this new part-time chief, is he going to work a full around the clock supervision we're, we're just in the dollars we haven't figured out what we're going to do what is the criteria for this job because maybe i'll apply okay we're not doing it <laughs> okay <laughs> we're looking at dollars yes <laughs> you'd like to have me there thank you thank you doug okay yes ma'am doug i'm curious you're saying that you just have the dollars down but now you have to figure out how to actually do it isn't that part of I mean, well, okay, well, that's a good question. What we asked, we've asked our labor attorney, can we do this? And she said, yes, you can. Okay. We have a finite of little time to get this budget together. We have between now and the end of the year to figure out how we're going to do it in that particular item. So you sort of make up a number and then you figure out how you're going to get not, there? Or we not? didn't, make, up we didn't make a number up. No. We know what we're going to pay that position. No. So, in other words, the position that... that exists now will no longer exist. That's position correct. Of both. So That's while correct. Chief Marsh is out on medical yeah. disability, you've terminated his position? No. No, we, no, we have not. I'm Jan saying January 1st. January 1st, we're that part position time. will be part-time. Part after January 1st? Well, I, I cannot know. discuss personnel cases yeah. in public. We don't know. I understand that. Right. Yeah. But I'm not exactly sure how you can do away with somebody's position while they're on medical leave. We're doing away with a position, a position not, the not the individual. We're dealing with the positions that we can do. We had our labor attorney here so to advise returns, us. So if you hypothetically after January 1, you'll say that your full-time position no longer exists. While you were gone, we abolished that position? Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying? That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying, yes. Wow. Yeah. Any other comments? Yes. Um, just a question. Have you had any felt any pressure from the state to force or make it uh, financially difficult or financially acceptable to combine town and village entities? Yes. There's no question. 
that Albany wants us to combine municipalities. And, How do you and, feel about that? Uh, what, what, you know, that's, that's a whole other ball game. That uh, one of the things that Mr. Cantorino and I went to Albany. That was one of the kind of things that we read between the lines. And uh, uh, what will the future hold? If this five-year, two percent cap holds for five years, I think there's going to be in in New York State. Uh, And so these are the kind of things that Albany is looking at. Say, so why is it? How many police chiefs do we have? How many fire department chiefs do we have? How many building office inspectors do we have? How many town clerks do we have? And village clerks and city clerks? I know they're looking at all of this. Okay. We've done our job. We want to keep our identity as best we can, but we'll have to see where it all goes out in the future. But it's going to take a lot more than just this short suspense that we've had to determine where our future is. Because we, we've not had a whole lot of time to think about this. Uh, I, right? I, I, from what I've heard of these people say, I'm quite impressed with the way you tackle the problem. Thank you. Well, thank you. Very well, thank you very much. I would just like to expand on your comment and please give your name for the record so you can. Sure, Gertrude Seifelblatt, 208 Rape Road. Yeah, Gertrude. Um, what we did struggle with, we had to take so much out of each department in order to balance this budget. What we struggled with is to make sure that we did not reduce services, nor reduce the force by any full time police officers. Uh, so we, we have accomplished that. Uh, we have uh, senior police officers, we have two sergeants, so we have management in there right now that are functioning. So there will be absolutely no reduction in services. The only places that we saw that could be reduced possibly, and we discussed it all, was the chief's position. Once again, all the management teams are still there. Sergeant Faust and so on and so forth. So that's how we came to that determination. That, uh, uh, otherwise, we would have had to go into the real muscle and reduce services. Okay. That was our intent. Regarding the reduction in services, yeah. I have to refer back to a meeting several months ago when you were discussing uh, next year's budget and how to right. come in on budget for this coming year. Right. And you spoke about. Um, reducing or doing away with patrols in the far-reaching areas of right, the town. Right. I have to tell you, for starters, how offensive that comment was. So it was not done. These were things that we had. Are you saying that it won't be done? I just said there would be no reduction in services at all. No. This budget for no. 2012. That you would even contemplate giving less services to... I, I, I we had to take saying. every single option that we could think of and throw it in the mix and discuss to see which one was the... Uh, but that's, that's saying that you're going to give less services to some people than to we others. didn't do it. That you even contemplated doing that. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Well, I think... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse, okay. excuse me. Excuse me. But I, I don't know what meeting you were at. <laughs> I don't remember. All right. That. But we have never talked about... You talked about... No. You're, you're wrong. You might have read that in a letter. No, I was sitting right here in this All right. actual seat. Was that the letter that somebody read? No. Because we never cut services uh, I, I, in the police department. Uh, well, we had anyway, the same amount of cars, the same amount of patrols. Yeah. Well, since since I got here, and I got here in yeah. 2005. So okay. you're saying that at a previous meeting, so I just want to talk about state the doing clear. away with house checks and, and reducing spending, um, reducing uh, well, uh, what's, what's your name now is what we have in the budget, and, 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 if you can. Does anyone else have a... Uh, yeah, Doug, I want to uh, discuss this chief situation again. I kind of disagree with the part-time chief. The, part, the chief is the head of this department. He is the supervisor. The buck stops with him. It almost seems that we have a situation here where a sergeant that is now serving in the town of Goshen Police Department, unless there's something wrong with him upstairs, he could not take that job because he would probably lose thousands of dollars. So 
you got two options here. You bring in somebody that's willing to take that kind of money to supervise the entire police department or hire a, one of the new hirees who's making 40 and change, make him the chief. So it takes out of the mix, as you just said, the management team to elevate one of these well-tenured sergeants, perhaps, to the chief's position, because otherwise he's going to lose a hell of a lot of money. Jerry, I'm not going to get into the what's and this and this and that. We're talking how much money we had to take out, the 600 and some odd thousand dollars to make this thing float. No, I agree with that. And, That's and a tough then, job. Uh, was, and if someone, I mean, and so there's a lot of things. But what we tried, I'm going to share with you what we tried to do. All of our officers, to include our two sergeants, They've got jobs for 2012s in there. They're the ones who provide the service to the street, to the citizens. The chief and the secretary are support. And so we put our focus on maintaining the service that we've got. We've got two leaders out there with the two sergeants. And we think it's not ideal. It's leader. not ideal. Mm -hmm. But we've been told by our attorney, the labor attorney, that a part time chief would work fine. And so we're going to go with that. Yeah. What expertise does your attorney have in the management of police departments? The fact is, Jerry, nothing is perfect in this thing. It is. Uh, you know, we, the, having a 19, there are people out there who say, well, you bought a 1994 truck and put it in service? You put a 1995 truck in service? That's not a good thing. Rip seats, this, that. Well, we've got to do it to, to save money to be competitive in the state. There are people, there are people who say, you have too many fire departments, you have too many police departments, you have too many municipalities. You have too many and, politicians. Well, you know what? We probably do, and there are going to be fewer of them when yep. we, if we consolidate and merge. But, you know, we've got to be real. that comment isn't meant towards this board. We, we've got to think you, differently Jeff. going forward. We have None of this is fun. <laughs> None of this is fun, and it's not perfect. No. It is not perfect. Okay, but anyway, thank you. Thank you for answering okay. my question. Sorry, I came in a little late. Was okay. the fire department budget in here? What? No. The fire department no. No, 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 we don't have that. This is our budget. No. The way that works is, is they, just, they, just, they just give us that. We just collect what they approve. Yeah. We have yes. no say. They give us their budget, and we have to collect it. That's the process. Nothing from the fire department. It may be a line but they don't review it. Is there any how much we have to pay them? Yeah. Well, we don't have any budget. I'm not saying budget here. We have a different page three of the budget. Do you have something from last year? They live within their 2%, is my understanding. Yeah, it was just under 2%. They have to come in at 2%. Then they're obligated to say anything. Unfortunately, they don't. Fall under the same uh, critical eye as the other agencies as the police department yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They just submit the budget and boom, and, we have to pay it. And we right. like it. Similar to the school board. Yeah. This is a good question. You, you know what we know. I mean, it's. Uh, okay? Having a catered dinner tomorrow night. What? Yes. A catered dinner tomorrow night. Specific line items. Um, I'm looking at page 18. Okay. You see for the actuals on. For six months, for things like patrolmen part time, um, under officer and pay, um, on page 19, telephones, utilities. I see that the six month number is for 2011 is higher than what you budgeted for 2012. So, how are you seeing the, the those line numbers? items in the police budget? Uh, were the chief put together what they were, okay? mm -hmm. and when we then discussed it with the leadership in the police department to include the union, he said, what can you do? And those lines reflect what they thought they could do. So, for instance, under utility line, um, Used five thousand three hundred twenty-four dollars in utilities for the first six months, but yet you have five thousand five hundred dollars budgeted for the entire next year. 
So we just I, turn off utilities after six months? I, I'm not sure how. Okay. Uh, Bill, you could answer that question. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what they submitted to No, us. that's what they that's submitted to us. That's what, that's what the department submitted to us. Right. So maybe they're, maybe they're going to cut the heat down all year long or something. I don't know. Maybe they had the lights burning all night. And we, we, that's what they submitted. Each to department us. head gives us those items. In this particular case, it was critiqued by the police department leadership. I'm just not understanding how it, it, it spent more than that for the first six months of 2011. Well, maybe there's some kind of change. I don't know. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Would someone like to make a motion? Well, uh, Dennis, you want to go through the, uh, yeah, the resolution? I mean, in your agenda package is the, is the uh, resolution adopting the preliminary budget. And basically it recites that the preliminary budget was uh, submitted, analyzed, public hearing held, and uh, modifications and or approval were considered. Uh, copies should be annexed to the resolution, which again, all the board members have the line items. And that budget, uh, as set forth in the preliminary budget, does not violate the limit on the amount of real property taxes that may be levied pursuant to General Municipal Law Section 3C. And you are not violating the 2% real property tax levy uh, annual between years. And whereas the town board uh, wishes to adopt that preliminary budget in its entirety with modification, it would then be a question of some uh, councilman moving the adoption and the affirmative vote should the board so decide. Okay, would someone like to make a motion regarding this resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, Madam Clerk, can we have a roll call vote, please? Councilman Cantorino? Aye. Councilman Lyons? Aye. Councilman Newbold? Aye. An aye, a yes, or a no, a no. Yeah, aye. <laughs> I don't want to get confused. Councilman Capella? Aye. Supervisor Bloomfield? Aye. Motion carries. The budget has been adopted. Thank you very much. Can I add something before we go? I, I want to add something too. You know, um, I'll be very, very brief. I mean, like 14 years, I guess, it's my 13th budget. And forget about what the board does because that's what we're paid for. They've done an excellent job for 13 years I've been. But it's been the most difficult one emotionally for myself. If someone told me 14 years ago that we'd have to let some people go. It hurts. This this budget hurts. And Bill Standish, I mean, he works with these people every day, and he's had like 30 or 40 revisions. I can assure the public we are down to bare bones. What this board did and what Bill did is, is phenomenal, in my opinion, uh, with all the years I've been here. And I really want to thank Bill because he works with a lot of these people day in and day out. And for them to come into office, maybe you have to pick up their last paycheck. That hurts. I'm on the myself now, so I know the pain, but... Bill, I take my handle. I don't know how you do it, and God bless you. Thank you for your comments, Kenny. Okay, the next slide. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, pardon me. Go ahead, Louie. Thank you. Uh, I don't know how to really put this, but I want to summarize a little bit. Uh, some things will be repeat from what Doug has said, but uh, like, like Ken said, this is a very tough budget. Um, it made it tough because if you heard anything about this board in the last several years, we run a tight ship. We wouldn't be buying used equipment if we didn't run a tight ship. Um, we have cut in the last years where we haven't replaced work, uh, people that have left because of keeping the budget low because uh, Doug had a vision three or four years ago about the fact that how this economy was going to be. When we heard it three years ago, he said it's going to get even worse. And he repeated that at every meeting, and it's gotten worse. But I just want to point out some of the responsibilities here. Uh, you know, when you hear that we have to make up offset uh, state retirement benefits, to me, something went wrong in the state. Because I can tell you right now, for something to go up 70% and 45%, these employees are not getting that money. We're, we are probably replacing money that the state has lost somehow, somewhere. All right? And we're making it up. Uh, I'm retired. Nobody ever made up my 401k or something that I, for my retirement. So that, that upsets me when we have to uh, do what we did this past couple of months where we have to lay off, cut back to part-time because of people 
in Albany not doing their job right. As far as the mortgage tax, we lost $2 million in the last four years or so. That's a lot of money to try to make up when you only have uh, a $6 million, $7 million budget. But we did it all along for the last couple of years. And that's all a reflection of the housing industry. That, is, that doesn't come from us. It doesn't come from my neighbors. It doesn't come from anybody that lives here. That's a federal government problem that, that was caused. And we're suffering the pain for the two, those two agencies, the state and the federal government. And, and I say this because I remember Jerry Boss at one meeting complimented the board and our level that uh, being the lowest uh, entity of government uh, is a little hard because we eat breakfast with our neighbors at diners. We have dinner with our neighbors at places we go to eat. And, uh, and you're face to face with them when you go to ball games and so forth. So it's not as easy being in the state or the federal government where you're not breaking bread with your neighbors. This is this was very, very hard. And I challenge the state and the federal government to do the damn job that we have done this year because they need to do it. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Lou. You got a great you memory, Lou. You're on it on the money. I did say that. <laughs> I know you did. I didn't forget it either. Well, I, 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 you know, we're talking a little bit about how we feel. Um, I always say to someone, if you get a better idea, what is it? All of us are smarter than any one of us. All of us. And uh, again, I'd like to thank all the, the union membership, department heads, police leadership, Bill, everybody who put, put this together. Uh, is it perfect? I don't know. We'll find out as the year progresses. Can we do everything we say we're going to do? We'll try our best. Um, but the fact is, let's go back to New York State again. Uh, we've got to become cost competitive. Or the people, just stop and think, if, if we didn't do this 2% tax, the way the farmers have been decimated, are we going to tax them more this year? The seniors, seniors that just could barely hold on. And the next item you're going to see where we're talking about, $280,000, $280,000 of unpaid water and sewer bills. The financial health of our community is waning, waning. And we've got to find better, easier, smarter ways of doing it. And so there's no malice on our part saying, well, we're going to have to put that person, that person, that person, that department. Not so. Which brings me up then to the next item. We have a... Can we all comment? Can, can we finish commenting? Or we, done the we did. You did before. We did. <laughs> close the public hearing. We did. 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 Go for it again. You want some more, Phil? All right. No. Really, all I wanted to say is uh, this process didn't some more start please? just now. <coughs> this board, we started this process in 2006 only because we saw what the tenor of the times looked like it was bringing. We did not borrow one penny from 2006 till now. So you can see our debt reduction that we had to pay every year is down 300,000. That allows us to put 300,000 back into other areas of the budget. And the one thing I'm, 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 I'm amazed at is I know how hard it was to get to this budget because I'm the financial, uh, in charge of finance. And I know that this municipality is probably, not that we're in great shape, but in, in probably the best shape of the 21 municipalities in Orange County. I would go out on a limb and say we are probably the most solvent. So knowing what we had to go through to arrive at this uh, this 2%. I can't imagine what the other municipalities are doing or how they're doing it. So uh, I, I just commend this board. We took the hard road, we took the high road, and everyone is feeling the pain. Everybody. So I just want to commend the supervisor and this board for what we have done over the years. Thank you. Oh, I, guess, I, guess. Oh, oh, you <laughs> I know George didn't go oh. yet. I'm last in line. 
I got I got I got to say something now, otherwise you know people might think something's mm-hmm. wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> George, Too late, George. I, George you're, 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 Too late. I think you're fine, George. Okay, so I'll make it quick. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm fine? Um, I, I think one of the uh, more notable things is uh, when Doug was going over was that actually there's a, a decrease in the budget. I mean, I've been doing this now for 24 years in different capacities, and uh, to have an actual decrease in the total number of dollars just because of inflation factors and because of contracts and so on and so forth. So to have a decrease is really um, uh, absolutely um, amazing. The only other thing is, is uh, drawing on my history, um, you meet people on the street, and of course you, when you're in an in a, uh, elected official position, many people come to you and say, you know, we have too much government. politicians, there's too many police chiefs, there's too many fire companies, there's too many, too many. New York State is just, you know, kind of out of control. And maybe now something will happen because of the, you know, severe economic conditions. I, I, I certainly hope so, but, uh, you know, we can do some, but it's, you know, it's really the people out here. You, you, you are the people who are... Uh, can uh, can make the change uh, along with us. I, I think, I, I mean, I can only speak for myself. I think I have a kind of a pulse of this uh, board. Um, we certainly are not, I'm not here to protect my job. If I, if I could consolidate, I would be the first one to sign on the dotted line. I'll, I'll give up my position. Yeah. I'll be number two. Three. So, you know, th- thank, God, thank God I'm in a, in a position where I can say that. Um, but, you know, we, we really have to uh, move forth and, and, and you know, we, we, I was thinking that, you know, these are the best of times and these are the worst of times. You know, maybe, maybe something out of all this severe economic uh, situation, maybe something really very productive will come out, out of this and uh, we'll all be better off for it. Thank you. Okay. Let's go to the next item then, which is, I've got a resolution, it's called the Town of Goshen Resolution relevy of unpaid water and sewer charges. Be it resolved that the following charges for water and or sewer service remain unpaid as of the date of this resolution be relevied upon the 2012 real property tax rolls. And what we're talking about <clears throat> is $269,044.54 for unpaid utilities. That's water and sewer. $11,088.39 for meter installation uh, that was unpaid. So for the total unpaid services and meters, it's $280,132.93. Now we have four water districts and two sewer districts. All together, it's about 500 families. This is $280,000 of unpaid water and sewer bills. Now, that doesn't speak loudly. It doesn't speak loudly to the financial condition of our community. I don't know what does. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, would someone like to make a motion regarding this relevy? So moved. Second. Any discussion? The discussion I have is this goes on their property tax and at the county level. They've got to pay it, okay, or their house will be put up for tax sale. Okay. So that's what this means. Uh, can we have a roll call vote on this, please? Councilman Cantorino? Aye. Councilman Lyons? Aye. Councilman Nubo? Aye. Councilman Capella? Aye. Supervisor Bloomfield? Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Uh, would someone like to make a motion? Oh, George, go ahead. This one, next one's yours. Under new business, request by Little League. As one of my capacities as the liaison to the JRC, Joint Recreation, uh, there's a new uh, scoreboard that's going out in uh, Craigville Park, being donated, uh, uh, being donated to the th- through the Little League. So, um, what uh, the chairman asked me to do was to run this past the town board. We have a, um, a permit application of $105, and they're requesting that the $105 be waived. 
Uh, I have spoken to Neil about this, and uh, Neil said he has absolutely no problem with that being waived, but it's a board responsibility. The board has to do that. Would you make a motion in regard? So moved. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Yes. Um, not, I don't, if it's not pertinent to this, but uh, this, before I approve a, a waiver building, is this school board going to have a sponsor's name on it? Um, I don't know that, but um, I would maybe follow up question. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I really, I really don't know. To the best of my knowledge, um, it's uh, Milltown Honda okay. was actually donating this to the Liberty. That's what I was uh, told. Whether or not there's going to be a sign on the, you know, Milltown yeah. Honda, I, I don't know. Okay. Well, the reason I bring it up because we've said no sponsors on school boards. Yeah. That's right. So I and there's a difference between them. Right. I can't really. I can't really. Right. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. If you would, George, your next meeting reinforce the fact that thank you very much for the sign, but it mm -hmm. can't have advertising, advertising on it. Okay. Uh, well, let me let me stop you right here then. Okay. Because, uh, I think we have to discuss this a little bit more. Okay. Um, I would suspect, again, I, I don't know for a fact, I would suspect that um, Milltown Honda is going to put uh, something on there. That's kind of my you know, uh, a situation where I, I think that's going to happen. But again, I don't know for sure. However, um, there are... Uh, a lot of signs out in Craigville Park, uh, yep. as you know, and we have kind of protested that, and I have let people know uh, the Little League Field, as an example. Right? We had, uh, what, 10 or 15 of those signs put up all around there, and they put them up every year, and we have basically said uh, no to them. Uh, we have put up uh, this uh, uh, Pepsi and, I don't know if it's Coke, but in the past, in fact, I think there's one out there now that says Pepsi on it or something. So um, I think what's going to happen here, again, I don't know for sure, but uh, I think they're uh, looking to put a sign. And uh, I would tell you flat out that the JRC is not concerned about that. They are not concerned about the fact of putting a sign out there with Middletown Honda or Soreski or whoever. If these people are willing to donate that sign, they should have the right to put their uh, insignia on it. And that's the, the town of the right to tell them that's, that? the, that's the that's the thrust of the JRC. So yeah. no, I'm I'm just telling you the way it is as far as the way they feel, and I continue this battle over and over and over right. again, and it looks like the battle's being lost, right? Oh, correct. Oh, well, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, maybe it is. I mean, I don't know what. Who's running the show? Well, the one thing uh, I mean, they, they take taxpayers' money, and they don't. They shouldn't. I'm sorry. They shouldn't be running the show. They have to come here. They invite those other people who represent us. Some from the building. And when that's, as commission, we made them put the first Pepsi sign. We made them take the Pepsi <laughs> sign off. The they, first official one to major There's report. a sign out there now. I think that has Pepsi on it. I better go out and check it. Because so it's all it's all right. right. You know how I feel about that. You write those slides up. Uh, yeah. Why is recreation allowed that to happen? Okay. Um, well, I'll say I'll say one other thing then too. Going out on a little bit more. I know you're very firm about this, Kenny, and apparently everybody is. If a if we're living in tough times, we're not going to get a new scoreboard out there. So uh, all over the place, you see these things, I and mean, it's not just Goshen where you have Middletown Honda or something like that. If a company is willing to put up a whole scoreboard there, and it's going to be solar, by the way, too. Uh, that's just a sign. I'm, I'm not so sure that I'm that hard and fast about the fact that they shouldn't be able to advertise it. Let me just uh, reiterate what went on before, and Dennis can probably chime in, so we're not open to litigation, George, just by this. We had agreed someone else wanted to do the same thing, and we would not allow them to do it. We said we would give them a plaque of recognition. That would not be a problem, but to have an advertisement with their phone numbers and all those things, we stood pretty fast and therefore would not allow this other company to do it. 
So number one, I want to make sure that you being the liaison, they understand that we don't, we can't discriminate, not allow one company to do it. It was a realty firm, not allow them to do it. However, let this new firm do it. We, we've got a real complex situation. Dennis, are we open to any kind of litigation? If we do it, we yeah. refuse the one? Yeah, it's, 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 it's because without the advertisement, that other firm, this was a donation, however, this was an advertisement billboard, which is probably the cheapest form of advertisement. And I understand what you're saying. I don't know what they have out there now, but that other company would not do it unless they could have their phone numbers and all their stuff all over this board. And we said we would send them letters of appreciation, we'd give them a plaque, we'd do anything, but to allow them to advertise on that, we did not allow them. So now, I just don't want to carry this forward and put ourselves in trouble. Yeah, no, that's that's George. always a possibility. Yeah. It's a possibility, certainly, but I don't think it would necessarily be a reality. I, mean, I, mean, it was, I don't know how much exposure you might possibly have. But it's a type of issue which uh, I have my own feelings about. I want to express, but uh, the law is very fluid in this area in terms of what you can and cannot do. Uh, my understanding, the board it goes back years ago that it was a philosophical decision that because it was tax benefit. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, I just um, I think the better approach here, because I was just talking to Kent, because Kent goes back a long time, mm -hmm. uh, being part of joint rec and taking care of the fields that the did a great job way back. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think there's a charter. Yes. It says they shouldn't have it. And I, I think I the thought. best thing that should have taken place yeah. is maybe the little league come before the village and the town and ask if the charter could be changed and then go about the business. <coughs> yeah, because I'll be honest with you, I played little league ball yeah. a thousand years ago, and we were about to be on PIX 11 for the New York State Championship. I mean, of course, we didn't make it, but, uh, we lost the prior game. But our little facility, which was on school property, up at the John the Hooker School looked like uh, Ebbets Field. If you remember Ebbets Field, everything was billboarded. And they used to raise a lot of money from that. Now, in different times, different rates. Well, the size in the bottom of the village hall. Okay. And <laughs> no, so no, it's, no, it's no, a type yes. of thing that I don't necessarily disagree with what George says about you know, tough times. You may have to look to this. All I'm saying to you is legally it's very fluid. Yet Kenny's got a point that it's for years it has been that policy. This well, is it, it's in your chart. Exactly. So what I'm saying to you is it may be time to revisit these things. Yeah. Or, That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's right. Right. Yeah. That's the way to go. So this way well, when you do it, you're doing it according to a new charter. Yeah. And us as sitting up here, you have to represent the code. You have to represent right. the chart. You have to represent the law. And if you change it, you have to put the back it at the time. Uh, so if you want to, if you want to do this, Let's change it, and then we're all well, in I think sync. George was alluding to that, based on well, the I know, but I just well, wanted to know. I wanted some of the people to know it's a charter. Because of a the charter, charter if we went against the charter, we're actually going yeah. against policy in yeah. a sense. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, been a, it's been a long That's time. That's the whole thing. I wanted people to know that. It, it's okay. it's been a long time since we discussed the charter again, but I know that did in my early days when I was a liaison. The charter. Well, I, I brought that up, Kenny. You said well, yeah. it was in, in the charter, and then it could be. It would, the charter and the language that would prohibit things like that was never found. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told. Uh, oh. Look, uh, I, I think we had the document. We did. <laughs> we had well, the document. I'm, I'm just right. telling you. I'm telling you. I show it to them and they still do what yeah, they want. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, the bank with it. Well, here, just one other comment. They've they they made that clear. They've run the job. Well, I mean, they are charged with uh, maintaining the parks. But not a violation of a charter. We set up by our predecessors, parks, But, you know, they but are charged with why maintaining. Have, why have a law if you have well, well, I'll tell you. Law. I'll tell you how I feel. I know. I, 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 I'll tell you how I feel well, because sure. of being here and stuff like that. You've got to pick your battles. And this is not a battle to pick. If Middletown Honda wants to put a little sign on there because they donated this nice scoreboard and Sareski supposedly is in the wings putting another one up in, in the backfield and they want to put Sareski's there. Great suggestions. Why don't we sell the name I'm of the park? We're not the city field. Go ahead and do Ryan it. Stadium, I'm just changing Go ahead and do it. No, With my blessing. Here's the problem. That's me. You could probably get every automobile agency, well, every large company, 
if you gave them the opportunity to sponsor an advertising sign there. So how this, the selection process came about, there are a lot of issues that I have with that. I, 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 because I, I know, I'm sure why, the why we, why we do would this? be glad to do that. It appears that we need the, 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 joint, the joint rec leadership perhaps to come talk to us. I think so. Uh, it it and uh, and to hold off on this. Now, hold off on that. Did, did, did we make a motion we on this? We passed the wave. We passed the wave. Did we vote the on that? Yes. Uh, okay. So anyway, they know where we're at. And, and the well, fact I'll is... Set, I'll set yeah. them up then for what well, should be our next meeting. Sure. The next work we session. Yeah. No, we, the next one... Uh, Priscilla, when's the next work session? November 21st. There you go. It's a combined meeting. No, I don't want a combined meeting. It's a combined. Yeah, that's, I'm okay, saying December. I don't want to do it then. I want it December. December, December 5th. 5th. Right. It's okay, the work. December 5th. Yeah. December 5th is our, ne is our next next work session. Let's work. work. Okay. okay. December 5th, December 5th. Yeah, sure. Okay. Right. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Good, hey, good discussion. Okay. Now, and we got Kim, you got Zerensky, you got companies in Goshen. And they bring. Well, did they, were they asked? Okay, guys. Don't say All right. to do it. The next item is... Um, Dennis, could you lead us through it? You and I talked this afternoon. What, basically what it is, folks, we have a, a contract with New York Communications <coughs> Company Incorporated to install, to lease to us, digital equipment for our communications in the highway department. And it was $1,276 a month. You can take 5% off of that based on my conversation with the boss today. But, uh, whatever it is, I don't I do the math. But, um, Dennis, you had some concerns about the length of this lease and RFPs, etc. Yeah, I, I, again, as the board knows, the lease would take it out of the realm of uh, public bid requirements lease but what I'm saying to you is all I have is a two-page document uh, I don't know I assume this is a legitimate lease and we don't own the equipment for a dollar at the end of the budget. That's correct. Uh, the way it works is we have analog they right today we have a lease with them for almost right. the same money for analog equipment they're going to upgrade it with digital which right. uses the cell towers versus just the open air right. we're going from low band to high band yeah and that's all correct and that's that's being done throughout the whole Yes, no, don't get me wrong. That's all correct. I have no problem with it. But uh, okay. today, you can find no agreements, no prior records, no anything. It, either in the highway department or in the town clerk's office. So that, that's what caused me the concern. Okay. Because I just didn't know enough about it. And yet, if I know Lou has worked with the department, and I know Roderick, the superintendent of the highways, is very comfortable, and, and you may be comfortable too, Doug, I just don't have a frame of reference. So when I go back to empirically check, uh, it just doesn't exist. That, that was why I voiced the concern. Well, when I was there the other day, I, I, I could tell you that the old lease was $1,202. So he had to have some kind of He's got to be out in the highway department. You went to the wrong place. It's I not, went to the highway. Oh, did okay. have yeah. Michelle no, 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 I talked to Broderick. In oh, fairness, no, no. Broderick was rustling. I could hear him rustling through the papers and back oh, and it. forth. It may be there. All, all I was saying to you was I was, you know, nobody could answer my questions. And, and I just didn't have a comfort level. Well, let me ask you a question. So, uh... I know you say it's about going out to bid. This is not based on a one year, it's based on a five year. It's based on a five right. year. It was, and if it's it a true was, lease, you don't have to worry about that. It's not a true lease. Don't, I don't see a residual value on this. I don't see one either. Yeah, I mean, you know, at least That's right. you, I don't know what it is. you make payments and then the residual value, yeah, you can either buy it out or it returns to the company or whatever. Yeah, it, says, it says it's a lease. Yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a duck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I agree. <laughs> so when we're looking at the like, governor of New York don't State. Don't get me wrong. Broderick even indicated to me, that this, he, goes, he found indications that it went back to the early 90s when we first started working with We've them. been using NICOM for yeah. years yeah. and years well, right. and years. If you read the document, it, it says a lease, but then it says the first monthly rent. rent. This is a rental agreement. It's yeah, rent. I, I hope it is. There's no buyout, there's nothing. No, yeah. it's a rental agreement. It's a yeah, rental that, agreement. That, that's all I can tell and you. Yeah. Green, green, they don't need equipment, okay. but this is what it costs per month. And then when they changed, when they changed, no different when we all had to go to digital with TV, all right? You had no other yeah. choice. Right. Like, the only access to the yeah. So, so yeah. this is comparable to our, our copying machines in this building. Now, the question is, okay, 
Okay. Since we don't have a resolution. I don't think well, I have we... one. No, I oh, you do? Oh. I just was... You got the wrong numbers uh, on it. Uh, actually, I have no numbers, numbers on it. Numbers on it. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I actually have no numbers on it. Because, oh. again, I just didn't generically know enough about the subject. But simply put, the, the, tonight's meeting, uh, we previously approved the lease between the town and the New York <laughs> Union. And whereas they proposed uh, a new lease to be modified so as to increase the quality of technology provided, mm -hmm. uh, and whereas you wish uh, the town wishes to authorize the supervisor to sign any old documents necessary to put in effect and modify the lease, now therefore be resolved that the town of Goshen is hereby authorized the supervisor to sign any and all documents to effectuate the foregoing, and is hereby authorized the supervisor to sign the annexed lease agreement, which is annexed, uh, New York uh, Communications Company Inc. with the town of Goshen for the lease of Motorola radio equipment. And what is attached is that two page, uh, one to me is price quotes, and two is the actual lease form. <coughs> so if so a board member would move that, you can certainly second the motion, consider it. Would someone make like that motion, please? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, if you're going to annex this as part of the legal document, a municipal lease is either a dollar buyback or a buyback figure. A real lease is a buyback. A rental agreement is just a rental agreement. So I want to make sure that the terminology. I mean, I don't, I, I'm not technical, but yeah, no, I don't I, disagree. So. I, I, you know, I want, I want to know what. Yeah, that was my concern. Yeah. I just didn't know who to speak with. I mean, I, the people I spoke with did not know. So if, if if we act on this, and they don't have it in the context of a regular lease, do we still have to abide by it because we made? We attach this, or can we just say no, sign it? No, it would be a violation of the law. Should it turn out to be a purchase contract? And that, it, that is, it is not a purchase contract. No, let, yeah. let, me, let me share with you how it works. Old, old, let, that's let me, exactly right. A conditional okay. sales contract let, is a purchase okay. contract. Now, let me, let me share with you. I mean, I don't know what the old lease or rental agreement looks like. Okay. But since back in 2005, when I wrote these folks a letter saying, would you please reduce your cost to us by 5%, they said yes. Okay. This. We have these speakers, or phones, in the trucks, so when they're plowing snow, they can talk to each other and say, And dial up. There's a, and dial up. They're analog systems. It's going to digital. They'll be using towers versus open space. Same service, same everything. That equipment belongs to them. At the end of this period, it belongs to them, and they swap it out. Now, that, to me, is rental. And maybe what we need to do is go back to this company and say, before we sign it, it's got to put rental versus lease. Exactly. And then, but in terms of tonight, because we're going to need this equipment here if we get a snowstorm, et cetera, et cetera. It was supposed to be in snow. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it says we don't have another meeting until the 21st. But we could put a weight off the land, but I think that uh, we could, we know enough to write the resolution as a rental, have these people change the the salesman change what he's put here and then go with it. Yeah, right. well, what I would suggest is I'll give text to uh, Priscilla, which would just change the language from lease to rental. Yes. And you're covered by the right. resolution because it yeah, authorizes yeah. you, yes. the supervisor, yes. to do anything and have a necessary to effect the way exactly. the intent. Right. If it turns out the intent is such that we're going to be violating the intent right. of so, exactly. exactly. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, do we do we need to remake that motion yeah. again? Uh, uh, the relative to that, uh, uh, there is a motion on the yeah. floor. So what we we, all we just no, you have to rescind it. I would just amend the motion so that the, the resolution reflects rental language as opposed to lease language, and then call the question. I, I second that. I'll take back my motion. No, you don't have no, to. No, you just amend it. Just amend the existing motion. I'll amend my motion. And, and I'll, you second the amendment. Second. 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 Right, okay, now, any more discussion? <laughs> no. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, can we have a roll call vote, please? <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Cantorino? I don't know. Yes, aye. Councilman <laughs> Lyons? Aye. Councilman Nubo? Aye. Councilman Capella? Aye. Supervisor Bloomfield? Aye. Motion carries. Good discussion. Good discussion. Thank you. Um, would someone like to make a motion? Authorizing the supervisor to pay uh, manual accounts payable runs, run of 11 1 of 2011, amounting to $4,511.80, and accounts payable check run, uh, which was November 3rd, 2011, amounting to $113,855.12. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now we're open for
privilege the floor and anything anybody would like to talk about. Bill, Eric? before we go there, you know, my, yeah. um, very quickly, um, this past weekend, uh, last Saturday, as a matter of fact, uh, I was never so proud of, of my neighbors in the town, town, town village of Goshen. Uh, they, we had the Farm Aid uh, Week. They had the Farm Aid concert and fundraiser for our farmers who were devastated during the flip. And I have to tell you, I, I'm not, can't mention names, but just too many people. But who, whoever was involved in that endeavor, I take my hats off to you. From the bake sale at 11 o'clock, which I gained a few pounds on, to the dinner at the church, to the acts, uh, all volunteers. I mean, just, if you were in hooker school on Saturday night, mm -hmm. And saw, uh, I, I, I thought maybe five or six talking to Jerry, said maybe, maybe 800. The place was packed. It was so, I'm sorry, it was so many people. But we all here. I have to say, I'm so proud of this community. They rallied around. We, we give money to Japan when there's an earthquake. And they came out in full force in the ocean. I've been here for many years. I've never seen that type of support. And thank you very much, all the residents in the town of Village Ocean. And even outside of Goshen, came to help out those farmers. Good. Thank you very much. Okay, we're now open for approval for Jerry. Yeah, Doug, this school board situation, this is not a situation brand new to this board. Approximately two years ago, there was a gentleman stood here. I believe he had a, a supervisory position or something in JRC. Do you remember that, George? Um, would, that, would that be Kevin? You, you mean one of the JRC? It wasn't members? Kevin. No, Kevin, I know. Oh. This was a short, kind of stocky guy. Oh, he's the little league guy. Yes. Who was uh, arrested and... Oh, yes, and exactly. Thank you. Thank you, because I wasn't going to say that. Yeah. I remember. Why not? You're the only one that says it. <laughs> well, uh, he had the same proposition. Yep. Thank God I didn't take it, because he probably... Well, never mind. Um, yep. And it was voted down, if my, if my memory serves me correctly, yep. because of the, it's adjacent to the VFW or the, uh, the cemetery, the vet cemetery. That was one of the concerns. I live on Craigville Road. I go by there every day. There's banners all over the fences. One of them is your counterpart, Mayor Kyle Roddy in big letters. I don't understand this here. We don't understand it either. Well, I think somebody's right. Are they there? Uh, Kenny said, are they their own identity here? How much do we give these people? Oh. Excuse me, does everybody know? 70,000. Oh, really? And they're driving the show? I don't know. Somebody clicking here with me. Yeah. We yeah. Agree. Thank you for your comments. Yes. Well, you know, Doug, yes. I, have, I have a few other comments yes. oh. on the happier side. Oh, okay. uh, today is the 236th anniversary of the U.S. Marine Corps. Yep. I had to sing happy birthday to my son this morning. We also tomorrow have a ceremony here at the village. It's 11-11-11. Uh, yeah, 1030. And on a sad note, Alan Lippman, who has come before this board many times, his wife has just was killed in an automobile accident uh, yesterday. Oh, in fact, I was talking to Alan today. What were they in Korea? That was the accident. 17-8. No. no. Corey Rose. Yes. That was his yep. wife? That was his wife. His wife she passed away in the accident, and it was an 86-year-old oh. passenger as well. Right. Tomorrow, you'll see in a paper, tomorrow they're having the, uh, the wake at the Episcopal Church in Warwick. For? Yeah. For yeah. Mrs. Lippman. Yeah. It's in today's paper. Yeah, today's paper. Yeah, it's in today's. Does she use a different last name, Jerry? Hmm? Does she yes. have a different last name? Yeah, her name was Pargeter Lippman. Yes, correct. It, uh, but is that always listed in the paper? Yes. Yes. I yes. uh, pointed out this morning of her first name. Well, where does Alan live? Does he live in Warren? Well, well, Monroe. He does. I no, he lives in Warren. Yeah. Well, they, 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 this is a second marriage for Alan. And for right. for she was a lovely, lovely lady. I think yeah. she was from uh, England. Correct. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 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 Wasn't her name Carol? I can't remember her first name. Yes, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her main name was Carol. She was, she was a real estate agent. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Realty. Realty. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, I'm glad you brought that to our attention. I, I, didn't, see I didn't connect no. the dots. Me neither. But yeah. it, it might be well worth the, the effort to research how that decision was made the last time this oh, yeah. uh, board, this scoreboard thing came yep. up. But I'm still troubled by all of those flags. Yep. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, you say there's one set of rules. Well, everybody's beefing. We don't want Honda there. Oh, wait a minute. 
you got all these other signs here. It's like, you know, it's having Costello. We have, the, the town board, including myself, has made it perfectly clear to the JRC that those signs should not be there and that there shouldn't be signs as, as, as per the charter. That's we discussed this, you know, any number of times. George, you want to get their attention? You do what Mr. Diana is doing to Valley View. <laughs> Defund them. Yeah. Uh, that, no, I, I, I tried there. that, Jerry. I'm I, I, I think we need. Time. I think we need I mean, to talk one more see, time. We're going to see them on the fence. We'll, we'll talk one more time and see if we can get to the middle ground on all this. The people who are in charge of Joint Rec are very, very good people. Yes, they give a lot of work, do a lot of hard work, mm -hmm. uh, they do. and and it's and we do a lot of hard work as well. But we just got to look at our value system and find out what it is that we can. We just, we just talked about we're on hard times. Why are we giving them a pass for 105 hours? I mean, we, if everybody's tightening their belts. Well, because it would come out of the tax money otherwise. Yeah, it's our own part. Basically. You know, we own for our children. Yeah, it's, it's, it's our own part. That show you. Anyway. That show you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And yet, uh, Almost yeah, short. It's six They don't get any of our money. That's their own. Their own line. Oh, that's that's plus, what, what they end up taxing the residents for, but not to the town. We just collect the money. We just collect the money for them. We have no say so. We They're a taxing district. So they charge. We get the check. So that's six million dollars. Right. They're their own taxing district. Same with the other five districts. All right, and then I just want to congratulate uh, Phil, uh, you, Doug, and uh, Lou on your uh, election. Thank you one of you had a close, uh, close run, right? One of you had a close run for... Yeah, one was two more, two more to part. <laughs> <laughs> Popularity vote. <laughs> he told his wife to pull it vote. He no. Told it. <laughs> I was thinking of doing the same thing. Now i got to tell you something. I said no. I have to tell you. I found out where one of the votes was. Last night I was having dinner in the graveyard with a friend of mine who is a, his wife is a Democrat, and she said, I just need to tell you, I've never voted for a Republican, but I voted for you. So I said... There's one of the bullet votes. You, you yeah. thought this out because Honest you're doing really bullet yeah. votes. Honest to God. <laughs> okay. Anyway, nothing to Can do we get the name of that Democrat? Because I want to give him a call. You know? <laughs> it's a hair. Okay. Uh, congratulations and good luck. We yeah. laughed. Yes. yes. Hi, Doug. I have a couple other comments. Sure. And I hope you'll actually let me finish this time Please. instead of well, closing the public session as you did when I was trying to speak before. Well, I thought I did um, let you. A couple of questions and comments. Okay. One, I was going back and um, reviewing some of the information that had come out when um, the courts had their audit. And I remember reading that um, there was $5,000 that had been loaned to the courts that was to be repaid back. Can I presume that that happened? Yes, the piece that Go ahead. The, piece, the piece that we funded to keep it from overdraft, that yeah. did come back. That that's did come fine. back? Okay, yes, and that's, that's reflected in here, it's $5,000. That, I think, was back late last year, so it's probably so the it old level. Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, another question. You talked earlier about protecting jobs and how that was one of your goals. I would, that was one of the goals, yes. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I'm wondering if you considered any alternatives to the jobs that were lost or that were cut back on this year, we, for, we, for next year? Well, well, a lot of work went into looking at, you, you have what they call um, codes, you know, B fund, A fund, mm -hmm. DA, this, that. And we looked and, 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 and we did our best to go in and do the things that we did. But are the funds independent of each other or they all work together? They're in independent one? of each other in many cases. So you you need to balance fund B without any regard to where fund A? I guess there's a couple no, of things I'm, that no. caught Well, I'm just, saying that, 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 uh, I'm just saying that we did our best to do what we did. I'm sure you did, but there are a couple of items that, that just seem to jump out at me. You talked about how there were um, a reduction of, of revenues from the courts. Did it 
Was there any, ever any discussion about cutting back on court sessions or court costs to reflect that? All department heads contributed what they could do. And, and so the court is doing one less, one less person. Do, do one of the people that's, that will be laid off mm -hmm. is from the court because of the reduced volume. That, that's the other part of my question. I'm, I'm, I didn't catch what you said about the reduction of forces. The two full-time employees were jobs that were not being backfilled rather that's than right. letting people go. So you actually didn't terminate someone. You just, you know, no, backfilled. No, that's right. I mean, dollars are dollars. But I can tell you right now that I had the person, one of them not retired, we would have had a layoff. I mean, so it just happened that we, we got took advantage of that. Attrition, is that the word? Attrition, yeah. yeah. Well, they decided I to. guess what I'm getting at is that all the departments are getting reduced because yeah. of attrition. I understand that. Well, but it seems like the only department that actually had cuts to people who weren't leaving voluntarily were the police department. No, that's right. That's right. Where are the, what others? The court? Well, we, I don't know. I don't want to talk. notified, so I don't think we should give the name. Well, be I'm not going to talk about the names, but I can share oh, no, with I you. Wasn't no, for names. Right. conceptually, yeah. conceptually, conceptually, three people in this building are going to lose their jobs. <coughs> who are currently here yes. will be asked to leave. Oh, okay. I, I, those are part-time people. They're part-time. Yeah. So, I guess what I'm getting at is that. Maybe I'm not expressing it correctly. It seems like you eliminated full-time positions without any regard to perhaps cutting back in part-times and, and leaving tenured people. The, the full-time person in this building rolled herself back to part-time and then very shortly thereafter left. Okay. Okay. And she was not backfilled. Okay. Because as none of the officers okay. have been backfilled right. along the way. I understand that. Right. Your, your policy is not to backfill, certainly. Well, I mean, if, if we had to, we would, but we didn't. That we were doing without in that particular case. The other one is a highway person who is re retiring. <coughs> what I'm sharing with you is if that person it was not retiring, more than likely we would have to go to one of the people in the highway department and say, excuse me, I'm so sorry, but you're going to lose your job. So because no officers quit during the year? Well, because no officers. Well, I don't understand that. what you're talking about officers. Yeah, what, what, yeah, what, I don't know what you're getting at. Yeah. You know, a comment was made here several years ago at a budget meeting. And again, if you don't remember two months ago, I'm guessing you're not going to remember two years ago. But a comment had been made that, um, and not by myself, that you seem to be targeting, you as the board seem to be targeting the police department and trying to reduce their their. Where did you function. get that from? I mean, I, I can't reflect on what you're, where you're going, what you're saying. No. Uh, I mean, we're well, trying where did to you get that from. Somebody in this room said it several oh. years ago, and oh, I see that. Ago. Yeah, yeah, and I see that each year the budget is is following what the, you denied it at the time that that's what was happening, and I. What do you mean denied? That that the police department was not their budgets were not being unfairly targeted in relation to the rest of them. That year, I, I'm going to point out to you what happened. All right, because I'm getting a little thing here. Uh, the officers, when we did the budget, I think it was last year, the year before, the budgetary things had to be cut out. The officers, some of them, took upon themselves to send flyers out and said that the service won't be the same. They read that letter here that night, okay? And I challenged them, and they backed down because there still was the same amount of cars on second shift, third shift, and first shift. And I said, tell me where the service is going to be cut back. It wasn't cut back. So I don't know if you were here that night. I think you probably were, all right? But uh, that's probably what you're talking about because we haven't cut anybody back. We haven't cut the shifts back. And we have the same amount of patrolmen and cars on each shift since I've been here in 2005. That's a fact. Well, I, what, what I'd like to say is... a fact, on day shifts, there's more cars than was allowed for. So, I don't know where you're getting your information no, from. Wait a minute. There, on day shifts, there's more cars... In other words, we, we had a standard of uh, two patrols and a sergeant on days, two patrols and a sergeant could be second or third shift, okay. and two patrols on night. That hasn't changed. Now, on day shifts, sometimes you'll see three or four patrols plus a sergeant. 
Really? So I'm giving you the whole scoop. Yeah. I can't give you any more than that. So nothing has been cut back. You're well, saying that now, now I'll add more. Sure. You okay. say that we're not uh, backfilling. Well, the person that just left recently, okay, we, when we eliminated the SROs, because of Bosi's not wanting to pay the fifty thousand dollars that the taxpayers were paying, we turned it over to the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. We did not let those two officers go; they were SROs. All right. We could have. So we increased our ranks when we didn't have to. We saved those positions. But so I'm giving you a little history. Okay, but yet you also lost with regard to the SRO officers. You also lost the income from Bosi's. We were losing money every year. They were giving us fifty to sixty thousand yeah, less, one, and we had yeah. arguments with what's his name, Olivia? Yes, Olivia. All right, Olivia. Olivia. He didn't want to pay it, and we didn't. We didn't feel it was right for the taxpayers because it said in the contract all associated costs besides the grant. He didn't want to pay that. So I'm giving you a little history. But didn't those officers... Well, let me see if I can... Let me see if I can... Let me see if I can... Here's the deal, what I shared tonight. Sure. Okay. The fact is, not one full-service patrolman or sergeant is being let go. We have protected their jobs because they're the ones who provide the service to the community. And they'll be paid... And they'll be paid... And the other ones will not right. get raises. Right. And continue so to get their raises. We did what we said we were doing. We're trying to protect those jobs because of the services they're providing. But there's two full-time positions in the police department that are now part-time positions. Where? 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 Chief and the we're talking about the, the chief and the secretary. No, no, no. They're, not they're support people. They're the, they're the not the ones who are out of the patrol car. And, you know. So, I mean, we had to take the money. We had to take one hundred seventy thousand dollars out of the police department. That was the, that was the bogey. I sat down with the union. I sat down with Sergeant Fuss. How do you want to do it? Yep. Would it make sense, perhaps, and perhaps this is something that you already considered, but rather than taking full-time tenured people out, we did reducing their well, We didn't. Go ahead. You did. We reduced the position. We did. Correct. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Would it have made sense, perhaps, say, for instance, highway department, to use to utilize part-time people there in, in the event of a snowfall, and, and rather than having people with less tenure continue full-time at the police department, at the fire, uh, highway department? That's our union contract. We, we can't change what the union contract is. It is what it is. And we're running short in the highway department. What, two people? Yep. Two positions we have not back for. We're running short. In the police department, we have a full complement of police officers. Just what it calls for. We are running too short in the highway department. See, see the, thing, the thing in the highway department, you, you can work what you call a backlog. You can't do that in the police department. Either you have someone in the car or you don't. Absolutely. You don't have In the highway department, if it takes two weeks before to get your leaves picked up or whatever, that's fine. And we took all of this into consideration. Everything that, that we, this budget, you know, is what is, 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 what's the question is the highway department? No, no, no. Stop. Stop. <laughs> anyway, I, I, you know, I don't, I, it, it's, it's, it is what it is. We've worked hard on it, and I think to the satisfaction of ourselves, yeah. and the budget, the budget said that. Any other comments to the public? I, 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 hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. Oh, I, I get my chance tonight just for Kenny. All right. Just for Kenny. I want to add to what Dan said and compliment uh, our three newly re-elected uh, representatives and point out to you that the uh, town clerk outpolled you all. Oh, we knew that. <laughs> and we're happy about that. She's, she's, a, nice, she's, she's, she's a nicest she's person. She's, she's a nicest person. person. <laughs> <There you are. laughs> right, that's right. Uh, and, and don't want to let the meeting go by without asking uh, for some comment on the um, IMA and the arbitration. Dennis? Ask that a question. It work very well. We're meeting tonight uh, in executive session to discuss a possible resolution. The village will be following up by a story next week on the site. So we're close. Making progress. It's going to snow this weekend. Would someone like to make a motion? We go and uh, adjourn the meeting, go in executive session with the intent not to return. <laughs> 
to review the potential settlement of the village town sewer arbitration in the proposed, proposed IMA, the status review of the uh, CSEA negotiations, uh, chief of police status, the notice of claim, Conant versus the town of Goshen, the status update on the tax issues. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miss Allen, for your comments. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.